Is it true, Anthony? Are we live or are we Memorex? Glenn, you know that saying, mm -hmm. if you want something done, give it to a busy person? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, then why haven't we gotten live shows done? I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Live. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Everybody, welcome to No Vacancy Live. That's Anthony Melchiori. I am Glenn Hausman, and we are really putting back the live in No Vacancy Live today. Great to see you, Anthony. Sorry we uh we haven't been around. Great to be uh, sure you're talking weeks. off camera saying that we haven't spoken and I'm blaming him. And yeah. I refuse to call him when mm -hmm. he doesn't call me. Now, I also want to remind him that when you want something done, give it to a busy person. He's yep. busy. I'm busy. We're all busy. But I will tell you, my busiest yep. friends uh -huh. that have the busiest companies are mm -hmm. the ones that get back to me quicker. Do you know yes. that? I always get back to people, right? But everybody who follows my life knows that I'm really horrible at calling or talking to anybody yeah, you know, ever. I, 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 you know, and I and, I, and yep. I'm terrible at it too, but there are a few people like you know, yeah, friends, business partners. You know. I know you, you know, you think I'd be better at that, but to be oh, fair, that was yeah, I got yeah. swept up in the spectacle of being in the incredible Toledo, Ohio last weekend. I'd like to thank the good friends over at uh, first hospitality for allowing me to deliver an all new keynote speech that I uh, put together. Well, so how that, was it? How was it? It was a lot of fun. It was fun because I got to, uh, I don't think your, um, your right microphone is working there. Um, Anthony, um, it was fun because, um, is I got better? to do a, uh, better? Yeah, I don't think it's on. Click it, tap it, tap that mic. Yeah, it's not on. Okay, so go ahead. Keep yeah. Going. Um, so uh, it was really cool because I really got to talk about some of the issues that you and I discuss here on the show about how if you can get more engaged with yourself, with your community, with your people that you work with, that is what's going to help develop and bring some of those uh, more profitability, more profits and happiness and all of that to your uh, your property. So that was a whole lot of fun. So uh, I'm sorry, but some reason this might- Aha. Is that better? Yeah, that's. I think that's better. Hit that, tap the mic again real quick. Yeah, that's better. It's working. Uh, yeah, right. just try to turn up your volume a little bit more, put the mic a little closer to your face and we'll be good to go. So- um, no, How was high tech? Uh, what's that? How was high tech? High tech is in June. I mean, um, where did you just come from? I came from the first hospitality event last week. The week before right. that, I was at Alice, the America's was, Lobbying Investment I Conference. I was out. Right. Uh, Alice was great. Um, uh, you know, for, for those of you who've seen all of my ad nauseum uh, coverage on that, you already know that the general consensus was that it looks like the new construction pipeline is picking up, at least when it comes to a lot of talking about new properties and early planning of properties. Additionally, um, a lot of deals weren't done at the end of last year, but a lot of people seem to believe that throughout the year, those deals are going to ramp up and we're going to be seeing a, uh, a lot more success in getting deals closed throughout the year. Also, expect us to be a little bit right now in a lull when it comes to demand out there. But again, through events and through leisure travel and through business travel, that should increase again throughout the year. Finally, even yeah. if you're looking a little bit of a uh, pricing pressure out there, it looks like inflation is easing and the power to charge more for rooms is still there in aggregate. So it looks like it's going to be a happy year for uh, for everybody. A friend of mine that sits on the board of one of these major hardware mm -hmm. stores, we all know who that is, um, literally called me this morning and said, um, what's going on? Things are slower right. in the hardware store business. And things, because I guess they did some really incredible analysis, mm -hmm. and the analysis show that the hospitality industry is doing gangbusters, and it's not slowing down, but the hardware store industry is uh, doing better. And I said, yeah, because COVID, right, and, and nobody exactly. asked anymore. <laughs> yeah, everybody redid their houses from 2020, 21, and 22. They're done with that. Now they're out and traveling. Um, yeah. But it was interesting that he, he called me and said, we just taking all our money. I was like, Good. yeah. Right. But it's funny that you should mention COVID because I think that started to really usher in a whole new way of thinking. And one of the things that we always talk about here, Anthony, on No Vacancy is it really didn't 
you know, create new trends and sped up a lot of trends. And in independent hotels, we're seeing more and more and more desire for people to stay. So today's guest is really awesome. We've got Saxon Sherrod. He is the founder and CEO of Revival Hotels. Now, he's been around, and uh, I know you're still a, a young guy, but you've been around career-wise. Not only did you find, found this company, you were at uh, Graduate Hotels, you were at AJ Capital Partners, you were at Hotel uh, Av. So you're probably really itching to kind of redefine where you're at after all that experience. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the great introduction, Glenn. Anthony, thanks for having me on. No, excited to, excited to talk about it. Young guy. Uh, I feel less and less young by the day. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 amazing. I You know, touching on COVID, touching on everything. It's it's not the same game anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's and you see the pro the all the brands and everything we have going on. It's, you know, we really want to make sure that how do we offer differentiated experiences and how do we offer something that's uh, new and hits today's traveler's needs. Right. And I do want to apologize to uh, Saxton publicly because we were supposed to do a show with him last month, but I had some internet uh, issues and we were unable to, to go live. So it's great to have you back over here. Uh, this one of your hotels in, uh, in uh, Massachusetts, which is pretty cool. And, really speaks to the independent nature of where we're going right now. So I'd love for you, Saxton, uh, share a little bit about how this hotel is reflective of the trends that you're seeing and why you think Revival Hotels is able to capitalize on that. For yeah, people. Groton Inn, extremely special hotel. It's Groton, Massachusetts, not Groton, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, really amazing story. So the old Groton Inn was actually one of the lar longest running, actively running hotels in the U.S., and it burnt down. Um, two great owners uh, built um, the Groton Inn in the same style of the old hotel. So everything from the wood planks to uh, floors to the way you walk inside, you think you're in a classic old New England Inn, but it has all the amenities of today. So smallest That's property, cool. uh, 60 room property. Uh, but in addition to the Groton Inn, you'll see below Forge and Vine is our restaurant on site, mm -hmm. which has a gorgeous view. Of, of Gibbet Hill, so all of the history of Gibbet Hill in, in uh, Groton, Massachusetts. Um, and that's a super popular, incredibly busy uh, restaurant. So, you know, this isn't your sleepy old New England Inn uh, between the quality of the room product and the Forge and Vine restaurant. We are really a destination type property. And, you know, why this is reflective of the hotels we manage. Uh, again, all of our hotels that we manage and work with are small independent hotels. So un defined as under 150 rooms with no brand affiliation. We have a little bit more fun in that space. And we think that's what people are looking for. People are looking for something different uh, post COVID. They want unique experiences. They want to learn. Uh, they want to see things. Um, what's great about this hotel is in addition to be a, being a regional destination, like a lot of our properties where we really take a lot of that drive to leisure travel and bring people from you know, the surrounding areas, this hotel is also does a great job of servicing the community. Uh, right. So you, know, you have a community in Groton, Mass, great, uh, great demographics. You have a artist, artistic history. You have two of the greatest prep schools. Uh, both were rivals. I didn't go to either of them, so it's hard calling them the greatest, but Groton Academy and Lawrence Academy uh, they're in market, newly opened Groton Hill Music, which is a world-class music venue. It really makes for, where can I go spend two, three, four days and have yeah. a world-class destination experience that isn't a gateway market or isn't the, the place, it isn't Miami, it isn't New York, it isn't San Francisco. It's how can I do something right. different and tell my friends about it and uh, have still have world-class art, world-class food, world-class experiences, but not be in that yeah. type of place. Anthony? No, no, and, and those are harder and harder to find when they're not brand affiliated because there's all the soft brands now are taking these beautiful little properties and putting them in the system, which is great, which is great for the brand. It's great for them if they want to do it that way, but they lose a little bit of control. Um, are you finding that as well? That the, like there's few, listen, I'm in the same business you're in, right? I don't, I don't really manage the hotels. I'm a consultant for hotels. And, um, you know, they're becoming, you know, you know, thank God I can consult on hotels that also have brands attached to them. But um, the independent hotel are, are fewer and far are further bet uh, between. 
Absolutely. And if, for those who know me or you don't see me sitting down, I'm six foot seven. So I really do people. No people, way. Yeah. So really people don't refer to me as David very often, but it is the yeah. David versus Goliath model. I mean, that's the world we, that's the world we live in today. And, and revival, you know, Glenn mentioned some of my experiences, the whole revival concept, everything we do, whether it's the management side, the consulting side, some of the new things we're launching, everything we do is how do we empower these independent hotels to compete with and, and, and offer a great product that goes up against the big brands, right? It shouldn't be a roll of the dice, right? We've all rolled that dice, right? We, where we yeah, stay in the kind of hotel, we bring our partner, we bring our wives, we bring someone and, and it's, oh my God, is it going to be as nice as the pitches are online? Or, oh my God, you know, what's it going to be like? It's hard. Obviously, the brands have a huge advantage in that consistency level, right? That we don't have in the independent space. But to your point, Anthony, in the independent space, we don't have those handcuffs, right? Or we don't have those things that, that we have to be forced into doing things certain ways. So we can create a more unique product, I find, a lot of ways. And it's how do we focus on that? How do we do it, right? And the last thing is if we try to operate a hotel the same way that a big brand operates a hotel, we'll lose, right? We're going to lose every day of the week. The big brands are amazing at what they do. Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott, Wyndham, insert here. They are incredible. They have an army. They've been doing it forever. Every piece of technology, they know it all, right? Yep. How do we, if we try to operate the exact same way they operate, they're going to be better. So to but me, that yeah, is yeah. thinking different. Their technology, some some brands, I will just say, is not up to where it needs to be. Oh, I agree. Technology is crazy, Anthony. We know that. We've been we've been in this business long enough, right? Ten years ago, you had three choices, and you had to use it. Now, um, between PMS, POS, uh, revenue management software, how do you build these best in class tech stacks that are yep. lightweight, more interesting? And and you know, there's some out there that we work with, and we try to. To me, it's when we meet most of these small owners. Most of these small owners aren't hotel people. Right. They don't even know the difference between PMS or POS, never mind who the systems are. Right. So it's how do we first introduce them to these systems and then how through our network can we provide them with pricing and opportunities that allow them to have it at the same cost that a large hotel brand has it at so that they can stay competitive? Yeah, absolutely. So what are some of the, 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 when you go in and start consulting and working with one of these independent hotels, what are some of the most common problems that you see throughout all of these properties that are, uh, that are out there? And how do you think that compares to the more sophisticated working with systems in the branded kind of universe problems? Well, the, I think the funniest thing is, again, to the point I mentioned, most of these owners mm -hmm. aren't um, hotel people, right? So yeah. when they have this chance to build a hotel, they start to think of the hotel, whether it's the product or the offerings or the systems or the org chart, they start to say, well, how does Hilton do it? Or how does Marriott do it? Or how do the hotels I've been to in the past do it? So let me try to do it the same way they do it, right? Again, you'll lose, <laughs> you'll, right. you'll automatically lose. So rather than saying, how can I offer a different product? It's how can I offer a product that is uniquely us? How can I take advantage of advantages? I don't need the same management structure that a 300 room Hilton has if I'm a 50 room independent. I don't need the same check-in process that the, you know, I used to be the hotel manager at Caesars Palace, 1500 in, 1500 out every day. Right. I don't need the same process if I'm a 50 room hotel. Right. So how can I start to break down the barriers and do things, right? One of the greatest things of our industry is meritocracy. Right. You can be a housekeeper. You can be a front desk agent. And if you want to be a GM, you work your way up and you can do that. That is what's fascinating about our business. The the, the risk with that in some right. cases and the risk of growth in our business is you do things the way they've always been done. Mm -hmm. My boss did it this way. I worked at a hotel 10 years ago. Right. We did it this way. Small hotels cannot afford to do that. Independent hotels cannot afford to do that. So, you know, we push our teams to ask why. Why are we doing things the way we're doing them? Right. Why not try it differently, right? And my guess and, is a lot of people just are just comfortable with the way things are, mm -hmm. and they also don't know what they don't know, and there's probably a whole lot of confusion out there. I get all of these pitches every single day for how people could help my website or market right. this show and all that, and I'm like, I don't even understand what you do. <laughs> tell them not to tell them not to email me either, please, Glenn. Right. I mean, right. my my box is full of it, and like, if you don't know. You know, you kind of get so much right that you it's shut down, right? It's right. paralyzing. And, and and not only that, right? If you don't know one of the things we find when we go into these companies, 
The other thing about our management group that's different is our management, our fees are actually based on GOP, a mm-hmm. share of profit, rather than traditional top line. So we care about profitability just as much as our owners, right? We believe in partnership and aligning that way. The amount of times we go into a hotel and they've added on all these tech stacks or these affiliations or these memberships or, the, or these pieces that aren't necessary, right? right. They, they, they don't... Uh, they don't um, they don't add they don't add value or you have two things doing the exact same thing. But the owner doesn't know that. Right. Mm-hmm. That cleanup right. Up front saves massive amounts, you know, percents of, of, of profitability to these to these hotels right out of the gate. But you can't fault them, because if you told me tomorrow to go run a dental business or go run a, a, a law firm or go do something like that, I would fail as well. So yeah, you know, I think the one thing you would do before you put before you opened up that office building or whatever it is, you would go to the expert and say, Correct. tell me everything I shouldn't do. Yep. And that's and why I hope people come to you, Glenn, Anthony, me. I hope they come to us because that's what we try to be in, in our space, right? Well, I hope they don't come to Glenn to manage their hotel. That'd be fun. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> However, um, with I work with a, a bunch of different companies that are entering the hospitality space, for example. Yeah. And um, I act as a shortcut for them to get to a place of understanding how they know how all the rules of engagement work in our business and how all of the systems work and and all of that. And by having somebody that can come in and help you and give you a, a database of knowledge for whatever it is, in this case, small independent hotels, you can save so, so much time and resources. Yeah, and people don't realize it prevents you from being a hotel impossible. Yeah, That's right. People don't realize how small the network is, right? I mean, think about it. You mentioned the companies I've worked for, the companies you all have worked with, right? Like, it's a small network. You go to Alice, you see the same uh, same twenty group yeah. of people that you know everywhere, right? Um, yeah. And it's it's you know I always say I'm uh, you know forget six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I'm I'm five degrees of sex. And you call somebody in this space, I'll get you in touch with the person you need to be in touch with, right? And right. that's that's the value you can bring. So two degrees of Glenn Houseman. Two yeah. degrees of Glenn Houseman. I think that should be your next podcast, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think that's really funny. Um, so uh, you, you get to this point where they don't know what they don't know, yep. right? So how do you get in there and think about you know advising them in order to educate them so they could be off on their own being yep. successful? So I'll always say, you know, my partner, when I started PostScript, my partner at Hotel Ave, Michelle Russo, had this line that said, good people want to do good, right? Like kind of kind of easy, right? Good people want to do good. Right. You know, first off, what we have to do is we have to make sure we have good people, right? Mm-hmm. And not that we go in and call, frankly, we, have, we keep everybody uh, in the organization, but we want people to know what good is. I think part of our business is it's so repetitive right? It's the same check-ins every day. It's the same cleaning rooms every day. It's the same making entrees every day that you start to forget what is good. And with so many people having totally. little visibility to P&Ls or understanding the goals of the business, there's no, it's complete immeasurability, right? right? Like what made me do well today? So the biggest thing we start with is actually showing someone, what are our goals? What is good? What isn't good? And then how do we get to good? And what that does is first off, it gets people tracking in that direction, thinking the right way. But that's where the creativity starts, right? That's, you know, we play, you know, we do a bunch of games and exercises and starting to make people think, how can I think if if I want to get to X, right? what can I change to get there quicker? What can I change to get there better, right? And it's that process change mindset that is really what we install that start to get people in place. You know, things like tech stack, super important things like partnerships, purchasing partnerships, all of that, it's super important. But I can layer that in over the first couple months. What I can't layer in are people who are naturally curious who want to be better, right? And that's kind of the culture shame change that has to start out of the well, game. Well, you just said it. And if you if there's a key for anyone to hire anyone is forget about experience, um, naturally curious people, yep. but make sure they're naturally curious about the things. I don't want people who are naturally curious about birds. I want people who are naturally curious about making people happy or a hospitality right. business or learning about wine or food or what makes hotels successful. And what we talked about off, off uh, mic was when you, I said something, you said, yeah, just getting people here on time, you know, and then when you get them here on time, they want a Bentley, a condo and, you know, and first class airfare to Vegas because they showed up on time. Um, that's a real problem. But what I find the real problem is, is the acceptability of that behavior. Yep. 
it is yes. And people say to me, well, you don't want hotels. Well, yes, I do because I am consulting. So I take it very seriously and I know, and I feel the problems that people have, but at the end of the day, the one person that is showing up on time and is really good will stop doing that. If you let two and three people not do that. So you've got to protect that one person who's a superstar and go a little light. Like everybody's going light right now. And we've got to show that that is unacceptable. Flexibility is acceptable. Having a schedule that works for you is acceptable. Giving us your opinion is acceptable. Wanting to, my job is acceptable. What's not acceptable is making a contract, verbal or otherwise, with your, with an employer saying, yes, I work three days from from uh, uh, the hotel and two days from home, and I will be available from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, whatever. That's a contract. Just abide by that. Everything else, we have to, as they're older, at least me, the older generation, understand that the freedoms that are allowed now by technology are the freedoms I wish were available to me. I'm able to do today, just today, I am able to mix my my family personal life with my business life flawlessly. I'm busy until 6 o'clock tonight, but about three quarters is business and about a quarter is, is, is personal stuff. Mm-hmm. Because of the flexibility of technology. However, so all that's right, but we've got to stop allowing mediocrity. Yep. You know, it's 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 when you want that, you know, you want, you want it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Yeah, I work with this amazing owner. He owns these two luxury properties in Belize, actually, which is, got to go down to Belize recently. Awesome. Matachica and Gaia Resort. Beautiful. Oh, what did you say? Live show from Belize? I'm sorry? Is that yeah, I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm down. Live show from Belize. We should do it. Um, what's, the name, what's the name of the place? Uh, so Mata Chica is on the beach. Uh, uh-huh. It's great. And their sister property is Gaia, which is actually located in the rainforest. Two beautiful, okay. experiential, high touch, high design resorts. And I was speaking with my client, the owner, who's amazing yesterday. And we were talking just about this. The second you let one person start to slide from accountability, you lose a culture of accountability. And accountability doesn't mean discipline. Accountability doesn't right. mean uh, any of that bad stuff. But to your point, Anthony, you make a contract. People need to be held accountable, right? I'm making, I'm making a commitment to you. Please make a commitment to me so then I can make a commitment to my guests. Not, you know, as, as, the, as someone said to me last week, um, it was actually the provost of FIU. It's about impulse control, yep. right? Is if you... If you allow people to have the impulse control they have in their personal life to come into business, it doesn't work. So you just got to modify that a little bit. You can still do things quickly. You can still, again, it's really important that every, in, in my opinion, that everybody understand if you don't move fast and if you don't get with the times and you, you're not where people want to be uh, from flexibility, technology, whatever, you're going to lose them. That is not an excuse. Correct. To allow people to come in with their uniform dirty, or to or to suck their teeth when they're talking to you, yep. you know that's and that and that's what I'm finding. That because you, Anthony, you have no idea how hard it is. Anthony, you have. I work with a company right now. They don't allow any of that, and they have a great company. And they have loyal people, but they know there's expectations, and it is very much a task force, uh, a task focused company that take care of people. And some of the children, there. people don't want that. They want the structure. I right? They might say that. Yeah, they, they need to know what the structure. rules of engagement are in order to know what you have to do for this level and to succeed and exceed. Correct. Listen, every, every kid at a high school should either be in sports in college if they go to college or go into military for a short period of time or go into theater because you can't, you've got to be part of a team to understand. You can't, like, you don't want to be the guy. Who has a bad attitude? There's a thing on TikTok, my favorite thing. It was a basketball player, and his friend must have made a, uh, his teammate must have made a bad play. And the teammate was walking down the court, like with his face like this. And the kid comes up behind him and takes his face and picks it up. And like that to me is everything, right? It's like he didn't allow him to be negative on himself. And that, as, as managers and executives, we have to say, pick your face up, and we're in this together. And I thought that was a beautiful way for business or sports, that your job as a teammate is to pick the other person up and don't accept their negativity towards themselves. Because self, when you make a mistake, you know, um, there's you have to have a pride. Like, I make mistakes all the time. Things are good and bad sometimes, right? 
But the one thing I don't do is give up on myself. The one thing I don't do is hold myself to a lower standard. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fail in life, mm -hmm. but that doesn't take away my feeling of myself and my credibility to myself. And when you start to see people like that, you have to hold them up and mentor them to say, listen, just because this was allowed in your last company doesn't mean you're going to be allowed in this company. And they want, to your point, they want that structure. There's, I know, I know this isn't all about employee engagement. We'll get to whatever else. That's, there's this amazing, this amazing book that I read, got blessed that a mentor gave me when I was really young called The Three Signs of a Miserable Job by Patrick Lencioni. If you haven't read it, it's amazing. And the three pieces are in measurement, irrelevance, and anonymity. Those are the three things that create workplace unhappiness. It isn't little pay. It isn't uh, no time off. It's those three things. So if you can let someone know that what they're doing matters, if you can let them know that they're more than just employee one, two, three, four, and really get to know them as a person and let them not be just an anonymous other number. What are those words? What are those words? Uh, in measurement, irrelevance, and anonymity. Those are the three parts of a miserable job. And I think, again, you know, 401k, work from home, all this is important. But if you can really get your staff and you can play on those three things, you'll have a very loyal staff that give great service to our guests. It's interesting. If you, if we, uh, in my book, show up, I uh, have five words. And one of them, is, the most important one is relevancy. Yep. Because if people don't know you exist, it doesn't matter. It doesn't you know? matter. And, you know, sometimes I want to be, you know, irrelevant. I just don't want to be around. And then people <laughs> don't want to be relevant. But I, I choose that. But you cannot be successful and not let people know you exist. And and even in the job market, even if you're working in a hotel in the county, every once in a while, you gotta show up. And you know, and you gotta let people know, hey, I'm here. Like come out of your cubicle and I don't know, go to the water cooler, go to the lunchroom or whatever. It, it, it's it, it's critical. Um, so Glenn, I'm gonna do what you do. What else, Glenn? Yeah, so <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, if I'm done talking and I know someone else wants to speak, I'll just throw it to them and then leave them hanging, particularly uh, Anthony. But uh, what I want to talk about is why did you choose to get in there and work with hoteliers that um, don't have the level of experience that the folks you and I would be hanging out with at Alice or other places? Well, it's funny. This is my third year not going to Alice, right? And I, I'll probably go next year just because I miss my friends. Sure, people will be like, hey, it was great seeing you at Alice. Yeah, I still get the calls there. and the test messages. Where are we meeting for dinner? Where are we meeting for drinks, right? All my, all my REIT buddies. Um, yeah. No, I mean, at the end of the day, if you look at the U.S. market right now, you know, there's 5.3 million rooms in the U.S., would you guess that 1.5 million of those rooms are independent? So 29% of the hotel rooms in the U.S. are non-brand affiliated, right? Mm -hmm. Those play, those hotels, those owners, those those properties need someone to help them level the playing field, right? And that and that's where then that's where we we want to offer. So you know whether it's distribution, what's our answer to points? What's our what's our answer to being able to get purchasing? As we talked about the tech stack, the right mm -hmm. tools the right marketing, the right awareness. How do I find the right talent? How do I make sure that the, the talent is appropriate for the property that we're running? That's the stuff that we want to work with properties on, right? It's how can we do it? And again, to me, more than ever, it's really understanding, you know, when I said 5.3 million rooms and 1.4 million, 1.5 million are independent. I also completely excluded from that the 1.3 million short-term rentals, right? And now that's right. a big word in our business, but you know what, those are independent as well in a lot of ways. And, and you know, when you start to think of cons consumer wants and consumer needs and post COVID, it's changed. What is somebody looking for in a hotel stay, right? How can we reflect in that and give somebody something unique, right? If I have a white horse, and again, I'd argue the, the big brands are thoroughbreds, right? So they are the um, American Pharaoh of horses, right? I was there for the Triple Crown in Belmont when that horse. Very, uh, very impressive. I was going to go with Seattle Slough. No, that's a good one too. That's a good one too. But if if I if I have this great big white horse that's a thoroughbred, that's great. But if a guest says they want something unique, I can't paint black stripes and say it's a zebra, right? right. I, I I need a zebra, and and to me, that's what we want to work with. So how do we empower these groups so that a they're known, b to the point we mentioned earlier that it's not a roll of the dice whether it's clean and and up to standard, right? That there's that level of of confidence for the consumer. But then also not only managing the top of the page on revenue, but how can we work on the middle of the page to make sure that you can actually create profitability, right? One of yeah. my one of my dearest friends, I think, 
one of the best operators in the industry, guy Mike Hoover is now the uh, general manager over at the Moxie in Williamsburg, does an amazing job, uh, worked with me at graduate. He was with BlackBerry Farm for a while. And to me, BlackBerry, you know, I think it's probably, if not one of, if not the best, in my opinion, one of the best resorts in the country, amazing experiential property. Mm -hmm. But that hotel lost money for 30 years before it became profitable, despite having a $3,200 ADR today, right? <laughs> at the end of the day, if you want to offer an independent hotel, you want to offer a great experience, you know what? You should also want to make money, right? You don't want to have to lose money for 30 years to get there. So how can we come in? How can we work together? How can we partner? How can we bring our relationships, our experience, our network, and start to give you the tools that you can start to manage the middle of the page, just like a big brand does, without the 8 9 10% franchise fee? You know, what I found to be successful in my business is don't have all the answers and, and don't give all the answers is to, to work as a partnership. Ask a lot of questions because not everything happens. And I'll tell you what people want more than anything today. And as, as all travelers, especially me and Glenn, we're in a hotel every week. Um, I have to be in one um, next week and the week after. The, the one thing that people want, whether you're a, a, an owner or hiring a management company or whether you're a guest staying there or your employee, friction free. Yep. Right. We talked about that, but everybody wants friction free everything. The reason we like our benefits on the airline that we fly is because you're in the you're in the Delta Sky Lounge and you're in you know you're upgraded without asking. You're just there. Yep. Right. And and the reason I stay at certain hotels is because I'm there. The clients I have, I stay with or they stay with me because it's no friction, man. I just I just want to make this easy. And at a point in my life, like I, I, I have the flexibility to do that. And I think that a lot of businesses, a lot of management companies and consultants want to prove their value by giving information just to give information. And if you're comfortable in what you do and you know how to move the needle, and I always say it, if you know how to run a PL and you know cash flow, that that's 90% of the battle because all your decisions you're making, you're tying into that, and then you can make valuable decisions. So if somebody says, Should I have, should I have, you know, turn down service? in the four star hotel. What's your PL look like? Let me see. Mm, we're not gonna get there. We're not gonna get there, but I want it. Okay. Can we raise rates by 20%? No, we can't. Not in this market, not this hotel. We can't do it. But if we give turn down service, we can't. No, we can't. Yep. You have to be realistic, right? Like you have to be realistic with what you have. I, I Anthony, you are speaking, and I think that's again, you know, the read owners aren't thinking that way, right? In most cases, you know, your, your big institutional owners are looking at prof, you know, what their, their quarterly and returns and their investment reports, right? But a lot of these independent properties will go to a hotel and they'll come back and say, oh, I just went to this hotel and they had this amenity. I want to bring it here. Right. Sometimes you can do that. It's great. But other times you have to say to yourself, you're not that hotel, <laughs> right? Your point, you can't have turned down. Your market won't support the rate to do that. And others you can, you have to listen. And, and I think one of the other things you talk about listening, we do a lot of process change in my, the consulting firms I've run in the past, whether it was Postscript or I worked for Carpedia, you know, a lot of process change. I never came up with the great ideas. I still don't come up with the great ideas, right? The great ideas come from the team. It's listening to the housekeepers. It's listening to the front yeah. desk agents. It's listening. What are the things to me? If you want to know what someone likes on a dish or doesn't like on a dish or your portion size is appropriate, talk to the dishwasher. Right. That person knows every plate yeah. what's getting thrown away on every plate. Those are the people to get that information from and listen to. So you can actually make decisions, Anthony, to your point, that make a difference for that bottom line. Right. If I if I um, great example, Groton Inn. Right. We have these oh. awesome uh, water stations on every floor to, to save the environment. Oh, that. Plastic mm -hmm. bottles in room. When we took over, every room was set up with a glass bottle. So you would take your glass bottle. You would go to the water station. You would fill it up. Right. First off, it's a pain for the housekeepers to bring the glass bottles to the room. Second of all, when I come back from my great dinner at Forge and Vine, I now have to go to my room, get my glass right. bottle, go to the station, fill it, and come back. So the housekeepers were like, why do we keep it there? So I said, why do we keep it there? So we simply moved all the bottles to an area near the water station. You go fill it, you bring it to your room. Now the housekeepers, their job is easier. They're not setting every room with these glass yeah. bottles. My the guest experience is better because they're not going to the room to retrieve the bottle to bring it there to bring it back. Everybody wins. You know, I took over the hotel when I took over the hotel. I wouldn't have known that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, but it took me to listen to a housekeeper to say, why do we do this? So the more you can listen, Anthony, I think that was huge and, and so insightful. The more you can listen to everyone in the organization, the better product you're going to have.
All right, I got one last question for you because we got to head towards a uh, wrap up time. Yeah. So there's this weird dichotomy that I see out there. Everybody loves independent hotels, but all the major brands says loyalty is everything. And a lot of times we go to that reset of what we're loyal to. How do you think about that particular issue and break through it for success? Well, we're thinking about it a lot. And honestly, right now at Revival, we're actually working on potentially developing a brand uh, mm -hmm. with a product that addresses this. Yep. You know, we were talking earlier about being guys who spend a lot of time on the road uh, in our points and our million mile club. And Anthony yep. just mentioned his lounge, right? At the end of the day, our business, for better or worse, is still built on, let me stay five nights in Sandusky, Ohio for work during the week so I can bring my family to Hawaii for the holidays, yep. right? And yep. until hotels either can create a better reward experience or a better points experience, we, that will always be a massive disadvantage. You know, there's a couple of groups out there that are working on it right now. Um, frankly, pre-COVID, I was working on creating something at Graduate that I think can be brought to a larger market or brought to our collection. But first off, I want to create an experience that people are choosing that experience. I want to give people the freedom to stay where they want to stay, right? Regardless of the fear of I'm giving up the points because points are a valuable commodity, right? We all we all we all have them. We all have that memberships. But yeah. if I can create an experience or I can create a program that allows people to make the choice that they want in their heart and have that unique experience without feeling like they're foregoing that, that's when we get the kind of the magic, right? And uh, in today's world, I hope that the hotels that you stay at independently and I hope the hotels that I stay at independently, even if I have to forego it, I hope that the experience outweighs that. But man, wouldn't it be great to have my cake and eat it too, right? Like, uh, wouldn't it be great to have both sides, both sides of that? And I think there's a way to do it. And, uh, you know, at Revival, we're going to be spending a lot of time working on that and would love to keep talking to people about it. So beautiful. I uh, absolutely love that. Uh, Saxon, how can we learn more about what you are up to? Yeah. So first off, I am a completely self-described hotel nerd. Uh, I love talking to people, uh, even when I don't charge consulting fees. I'm not that type of consultant. So, you know, whether it's a phone call, even on our website, right, it's my direct cell phone number. I love talking to people about this business. My fifth grade yearbook says I was going to own and operate hotels. I've always, no wanted, yeah, I grew up the son of a chef. This is what I've always wanted to do. I love this business. So I'm happy to talk to anything, anyone, anytime. Our hotel is www. Our website is www.revivalhotels. R e v i v a l hotels.com. Very basic website, but really designed so you get my information. You call me up, and we'll create something and try to create a partnership going forward. So that's beautiful, that's Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Saxon. Really Thank appreciate you being here, uh, and that was fun, Anthony, because I really love independent hotels, and I want to see more properties like this uh, Groton Inn, for example, be successful. Yeah, and the difference between a hotel like that being successful and not successful is just mm -hmm. a few don't do's or a few do's. Yeah, and it's not it's not rocket science, and it's it really works every single time in every single hotel. The, the basic strategies um, are ba are the same, and it's yeah. just the enthusiasm for your product, the pride, the quality, and the profitability, right? And you can't get the profitability and have fun. Um, if you have two or three things out of sync. So anyway, yeah, great yeah. conversation. Hey, and if you want to have all your things in sync, well, make sure that you're not only watching up us, but listening to us wherever you download your podcast. Come on, subscribe to the show. Show us a little bit of love. And why not keep watching us wherever you watch the show? All shows are housed at NoVacancyNews.com for your viewing pleasure. Anthony, great seeing you. Tomorrow we're back with, uh, with another live show. We've got... Um, uh, our friend Chris Manley, he's with uh, Five Senses Management. I'm looking forward to having him on out of Colorado. And then we've got the uh, this the president of Seaborn Cruises on uh, Thursday. That's going to be a lot of fun as well. Very excited. Yeah. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. And remember, you've got one life, so blaze on. And be kind to yourself. Bye-bye.